which are nothing but the credit default swaps though they are called as swaps what i could really see is they have a lot of option like characteristics or probably they have a lot of uh, insurance like characteristics so they are really one of the wonderful financial innovations in the modern day world so we would like to see how these can I credit default swap work and uh, what would be the typical uh, pricing and valuation mechanism involved with the credit default swaps so that we can very well uh, understand how the how they have become uh, one of the one of the key tools in the current financial markets so as an introduction to the same the way i would look at a credit default swap as a primary insurance contract why to look at it as an insurance contract what do we do generally in an insurance every period we keep paying premiums for some uncertain event right for some uncertain event thinking that that particular uncertain event whenever it occurs it will create in a financial loss we are trying to transfer that loss to a risk taking entity called as insurance company with an agreement that in case the loss occurs the insurance company will be replenishing the loss for this particular party whichever will experience the loss so there may be there may be a payment from the in, uh, by, uh, from the insurance company to the party or they may not be means the payment from one party is contingent to a loss only if the loss occurs then only the payment will be made whereas from the other party regularly in the form of premiums there is a regular payment this is how a typical insurance uh, contract works right and what i see is lot of similarities in the credit default swap contract also so just to illustrate the credit default uh, swap at a very premier level at or at a very preliminary level the way i look at it is assume that there is a a loan x has taken a loan from y now because x has taken a loan from y x has to repay the loan so y is exposed to a credit risk what is the credit risk here x may not be able to repay the principal and or interest on that particular loan so the way what y could do is y could take a protection against x by entering into a credit default swap with some other party z so y will take a protection on the payments of x with another party z and the protection is like this in case x is not able to pay the loan z will replenish y with the loan with the amount z will replenish y with the amount but of course to for providing such a kind of a service y has to regularly keep paying a premium to z and in case this default occurs z will be responsible for replenishing the loss which y is occurring which y is incurring because of the default of x 
that's the typical structure of a credit default swap so the underlying is a default on a loan or a bond even in the bond the payments are like that only let's say i x has purchased a bond from y so y is the issuer of the bond and x is the investor in the bond so x is exposed to risk that what if uh, y does not pay the coupons or what if y does not uh, pay the principal as per the schedule so to protect itself from that kind of a default x may enter into a product called credit default swap with z z may be the seller of the credit default swap whereas x may be the buyer of the credit default swap so as a buyer the x is buying a protection against the default of y whereas uh, z is selling protection against the default of y means if y defaults z says i am there whereas for uh, x x is trying to make sure that he is not losing because y is defaulting this is what is the transaction that typically happens in a credit default swap so the buyer pays a premium to the protection seller generally against the default of a third party and this third party is what we actually call as reference entity the third party y in this example i call as a reference entity and generally it would be 